I'm Dr. Timothy O'Donnell, and I would like to welcome you to the Eternal City, the city of Rome, the city of Peter and Paul, and ask you to join me today as we continue on our Lenten pilgrimage, visiting the stational churches found here in the city of Rome. Today we go to the church of San Quattro Coronati, the saints of the four crowns. These four men were all Roman military officers, and they were ordered to worship the Greek god Asclepius, the god of health. They stoutly refused to deny their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And because of this, they underwent a very cruel martyrdom. Their remains have been venerated here in Rome for centuries. So today, as we think about their heroic martyrdom, we will be climbing up a hill to a church that looks very much like a military bastion. It's a tower of strength overlooking the surrounding district. And we recall the military virtues that should characterize every Christian, the strength of character, that they will be faithful to their Lord, even in the midst of great suffering, as these four that we refer to and celebrate today, the Quattro Coronati. Let us go now to the church of the four crowned martyrs. This church, oftentimes, is overlooked by pilgrims and visitors to the city of Rome. As one approaches it, it truly does strike one as a medieval fortress. This church has a very complex history and structure. The church itself towers above the narrow streets and shops and dominates this section of the city. It lies on the Chalian Hill, between the San Clemente Church down in the valley and the great basilica of St. John Lateran. The church actually lies upon the ancient route where the popes used to travel from St. Peter's to St. John Lateran. The title, as we said, means the four holy crowned ones, and this describes a group of saints. Actually, it's rather surprising, for the total number of saints contained in this church are 13 not four. As a matter of fact, the first group of saints were soldiers who refused to adore a Roman idol of Asclepius, the god of health and healing. The second group, composed of five saints, were a number of sculptors who refused to make a statue of the god of health and medicine, the very same god, because these sculptors also found a resting place here, the guilds of masons and marvel workers were very fond of this particular church. We were also told lastly that there was another group of soldiers who were also martyred who found a resting place here. Also preserved here in this church is the head of Saint Sebastian. This church, as it has been observed, is an excellent site for solemn liturgical celebration. The first church appears to have been built back in the fourth century. It was referred to in the Roman Synod as existing here in this spot in the year 499 as the Titulus Emiliane. It therefore was one of the original 25 titular parishes or stational churches. The church was again referred to in the Roman Synod of 595 and was incorporated in the stational church listing of Pope Gregory the Great. This original church was substantially altered in the 9th century by Pope Leo IV, who reigned as pontiff from 847 to 855. He transferred to this church and brought here numerous relics of the martyrs. The present church that we see today is basically the structure built by Pope Leo IV back in the 9th century. Among the bodies he brought here were the four martyrs taken from the catacombs of St. Peter and Marcellinus. These were four brothers named Severius, Severinus, Carpophorus, and Victorius. As we had said, all four of these brothers were Roman soldiers and officials who were brutally scourged to death during the persecution of Diocletian. They had formed part of his honor guard called the Corniculari. This special group received a severe punishment because of their close proximity to Diocletian. They refused to burn incense to the statue of the god Aesculapius. They were killed in the year 311 
very close to the Baths of Trajan. The five sculptors that we referred to earlier, their remains were also brought here. Their names, which we should recall at this time, Claudius, Nicostratus, Castorius, Sempronius, and Simpincius. They were killed in the Pannonian region of the empire. They were drowned, all of them together, in the river Sava for refusing to carve an image of Asclepius. This image and its carving had been ordered by the emperor himself. The exterior of this church is unique in that it is approached through two very different courtyards. As one enters into these courtyards, there are beautiful vistas which can be seen. Embedded in the walls, one can see the remains of columns which have been enclosed in order to shut off the side aisles. Pope Paschal II also built the very formidable campanile or bell tower, which gives this church its unique military or fortless type of appearance, especially with the four rounded arches at the top. The interior of this church does have side galleries, and there is a beautiful cosmetesque floor and a coffered ceiling which dates back to the 16th century. The naves are lined with granite columns of varying width with Corinthian capitals. The most striking aspect, however, as one enters into this church is the great apse fresco painted by Giovanni de San Giovanni in the year 1630. This represents the glory of the saints. There is a popular nickname which is given to this work. It's called the Choir of the Angels because of the painter's depiction of all the angels in the feminine form. This particular fresco appears to be exceptionally large and involves one as one enters into the church. It can overpower one due to the fact that Pope Paschal actually shrunk the size of the nave. One very much feels as one enters as if one is actually enter into the heavenly Jerusalem. Below, in the crypt, one will find the relics of the martyrs which are enshrined in ancient sarcophagi. Also nearby, there is a beautiful 13th century cloister with lovely arcades, and in an upper story one can see foliage, including flowers and some roses and fountains. The fountain in the center dates back to the 9th or possibly 12th century and is one of the most ancient fountains to be found in Rome. Here, as the pilgrim enters into this cloister, we step back into the Middle Ages. The noise and care of the city and the world retreat away from us in this gentle oasis of quiet. Off the cloister is a chapel which belonged to the earlier church, which contains 9th century painting Fascinating, this chapel is dedicated to the memory of Pope St. Silvestre. It is called the Capella di San Silvestro. And here we have paintings, 13th century paintings, that tell the great medieval story of this Pope and the Emperor Constantine. Let us end with a prayer. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee, because by thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world.